Hey there friends, it's Elizabeth here from The Everyday Storyteller and I am back with another ink haul from Goulet Pens. So I have six inks to swatch. And as you can see, I also purchased the coloring ink testing booklet. Um, so I'm excited to swatch these inks on these coloring cards. Um, I, I didn't think it came with so many, but I'm glad I didn't buy a refill because this is definitely enough for my really small uh, ink collection. So I'm going to get everything set up and then I'm going to come back and swatch my new inks. You may remember, if you've seen any of my other ink swatching videos, that I have been using a Goulet Pens Tomoe River paper insert um, in the passport size, but I am actually switching things around and I am going to start doing my ink swatches in this regular size Traveler's Notebook. This is the Traveler's Notebook brand in their lightweight paper, which is Tomoe River paper. Um, I took a few of the pages out um, and rebound this book, but there's still a ton of paper in here. Um, and my plan is to test all of my inks on one page and then also do my currently inks for each month in here. So this will be kind of my, my ink swatching book. Um, I'm hoping that the Traveler's Notebook size gives me just a little bit more room to test everything out and really do um, all of the things that I wanna do with these ink swatches. I also have um, turned my new Ferris Wheel Press Carousel Fountain Pen into a dip pen, and I've done that um, simply by just taking out the feed. So um, I've taken out the, the black feed. Um, I don't have it with me on my desk, but um, you know what the feed looks like, right? Um, and I've just taken out the feed and just inserted the nib back into the fountain pen housing. And um, because of the way that this particular fountain pen housing is made, the nib stays really well, even though it does not have the feed inside. So I can very easily dip this into my ink bottles and use it as a dip pen. All right, so first off, we're starting with three Sailor inks. We have Sailor Manu Sakura, we have the Sailor Ink Studio 162, and then the Sailor Yurameku Amamoyo. Um, so let's get started with Sailor Manu Sakura. Um, so I am going to uh, open this up. I'm using my pipette to just gather some ink. First, I'm going to put a few drops on this Tomoe River paper. And then I'm also going to put um, a drop or two on the coloring card. And I've always thought of um, sakura blossoms, tree blossoms being very pink, but this is definitely a lot more orange leaning. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to use everything that's on my nib. All right, so this is the Sailor Manio Sakura. And then this is what it looks like on the Tomoe River paper. Again, um, definitely, I wouldn't say a salmon pink per se, um, but it's definitely on the orange side of pink. Um, it's actually really pretty and I like it. Um, I love the shading that you can see inside there. It definitely has some tones of yellow. I can see that super well here on this sample when there's some pooling over there. Um, you can even see it on the coloring card a little bit. The ring um, around the pooling area is definitely very yellow. Um, so yeah, this is a really fun ink color from Sailor. 
All right, next up is the Sailor Ink Studio 162. Um, this is supposed to be a dusky green um, with a tiny bit of shading. Um, I did it on purpose for this particular uh, bundle of ink samples not to pick any um, shimmer inks because I I wanted to make sure that I could put it in my newer fountain pens, which I'm a little bit afraid of putting shimmer inks in my newest fountain pens because they're kind of hard to clean and they're new and they're expensive. And I really um, wanted to make sure that I was giving them um, kind of the best, the best possible first impression. So this is Sailor Ink Studio 162. Here's my coloring card. So the first thing that I'm noticing with this ink, especially on the Tomoe River paper, is that it definitely has a pink hue to it. Um, I would say it has some pink, maybe some green, and a tiny bit of purple right here where the ink pooled. Also, you can see it right here in the halo. Um, so that's really fun. It's a lot of different shades. Um, I think I'm using that correctly, that it, that would be considered a shading ink since it is a lot of different um, colors all combined into one. That's what it looks like on the coloring card. Sorry, I was a little bit off frame um, when I was writing that down. Right, so even in the writing sample, um, you can tell that it's shading a bunch of different colors, which I love. It's especially, um, especially on the Tomoe River paper. So that is really fun. I love that it has um, kind of darker and lighter shades. I think I, this is the only ink that I have that is... Um, this different like it has so many different colors in it um definitely some pinks and purples and greens um where the ink pooled you can see that in the coloring card um the ring is um what i would consider kind of like a woodsy emerald green and then the inside uh is purple definitely um so this is really really fun this is a cool color all right, so next up is Sailor Yurameku Amamoyo. Amamoyo. And it, usually you would say yoi because it's Y O I, but I'm pretty sure I've heard it said Amamoyo. So I'm going to go with Amamoyo. Um, I'm very sorry if I am butchering um, these names because I have no idea how to pronounce them other than what I have heard online. So um, hopefully that was correct. Um, but this one is supposed to be a shading ink um, with multi colors also, um, but mostly I believe it's green that this one is supposed to be. So. We'll go ahead and try this out. All right, so um, this looks very uh, dusky green in the ink sample vial, but I'm actually noticing, I hope that you can get this, it's starting to look like it's going to rain outside. <laughs> My only light is natural light right now. Um, so I hope that you're able to see this fairly well, but um, it is green, but it definitely has some pink in there as well. So I'm gonna try to hurry up and uh, write out, um, my writing sample. I can tell this is kind of a dry ink just because um, I'm having to dip my fountain pen a little bit more. I would say that the Sailor Ink Studio 162 was a little bit uh, of a wetter ink. I don't know why, but whenever I'm writing with a dip uh, ink like this, I always feel like I have to hurry because it will dry, which I feel like it probably would not, but it feels like it would. Um, so yeah, I always feel like I have to be in a rush when I am using uh, a dip style pen. 
All right, so on the coloring card, you can see that I would call this a greenish brown with some pink in it. Um, definitely a couple of different shades of colors. Um, the writing sample, I feel like, is kind of brown, at least on the coloring card. Um, I feel like I am getting a lot more shading on the Tomoe River paper, but on the coloring card, it definitely writes um, a little bit more of like a greenish, pinkish brown, um, which is fun. I feel like there is definitely a place for this type of color. I'm not sure that I'm going to add it to a fountain pen just yet, um, but I'm glad that I tried it. So this is what it looks like on the Tomoe River paper. You can definitely see a lot more pinks um, in this particular sample, and I would say that it also writes um, a little bit more true to probably the correct color. You can see, at least I hope you can see, that there is some darker green slash blue um, around the shapes and a little bit in the writing as well. All right, so next up we have Rohr and Klinger, Klinger? Rohr and Klinger, I think that's how you say it. Alt Bordeaux, um, this doesn't have any shade or shimmer. As I said, I've been trying to stay away from that so I can um, put it in a few more of my fountain pens. Um, I also had to turn on an overhead light, um, so I'm sorry if the colors are um, not super true to natural light, but I am working with what I have. Um, I am filming this during the forest fires over in Canada, and I live in New York, so we are definitely um, getting a lot of their smoke and smog, and it's making the lighting a little bit hard to work with. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty. So this is definitely like a purple, purple wine color, I would say. It's very deep and uh, very, very pretty. And Klingner, that is probably a horrible American accent um, <laughs> for this German fountain penning company um, in Alt Boldo which I can pronounce because that is French. Um, so that is that. I'm already really loving the, um, the writing sample. So this is not supposed to be um, super shading or um, anything like that. There's nothing super interesting about this ink other than like the color that it comes in but I feel like this is a really really pretty color so I don't mind that it doesn't have anything um, super specific about it so I think I'm going to put this particular ink um, in my newest fountain pen yes this is just part of it um, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini in the Bordeaux Foncé. This is actually why I got this particular ink because um, I figured since they were both named Bordeaux, which is deep wine, that they would work really well together. And wouldn't you know it, they do. Um, I would say that that is a fairly good match between fountain pen and ink. So I'm really excited to um, put that into a pen. So this is the Rora and Klinger Alt Bordeaux. Um, on the coloring card, definitely like more of a, I don't know, I, I don't know if I would call this more of a plum. To me, it reads more purple than red. Um, so I probably would call it a plum, but I think it's supposed to be um, kind of a, a red wine color. Um, it's reading a tad bit more pinkish on camera um, than it does in real life, especially um, on the sides here. Um, I would say that it's definitely a little bit more purple than it's reading on the camera, um, but the inside where the ink is pooling is reading um, pretty true to life here on the coloring card. And then this is what it looks like on the Tomoe River paper. 
the writing sample. And then this is what it looks like in my Hobonichi A6. Definitely a very deep, vibrant color, and I kind of love that. So that is Roar and Klinger Alt Bordeaux. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to swatch is Robert Oster Crystal Marine, and this is part of their Shake and Shimmy collection, and I believe you can kind of see um, the blue shimmer particles at the bottom of the vial. I know I said that I tried really hard to stay away from the shimmers this time, but I couldn't help having just one um, because you know me, I love my shimmers. All right, so it's definitely a very deep green. Um, I would say this is definitely like a dark teal. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a lot of these shimmer particles in the writing sample, but I'm gonna try. So this is Robert Oster Crystal Marine. So it's definitely a really pretty dark teal green. I'm not seeing um, any of the shimmer really yet, but I'm sure it'll pop up here once it dries. All right, so I lost you guys for a second here, um, but that is what the writing sample looks like on the Tomoe River paper, and then this is what it looks like on the coloring card. Um, you definitely can tell there is that blue shimmer right there when the ink pools. I'm hoping it catches the light. Um, but that is a really, really pretty dark teal green color. So that is Robert Oster Crystal Marine on my coloring card. And then it is almost dry, but not quite, on the Tomoe River paper. And then this is what it looks like in my A6 Hobonichi, also not quite dry. We will come back to that later. All right, so my last one is Dea Trementis Document Fog Gray, and from what I understand, the document notation means that it is waterproof. So um, this is one of my only waterproof inks. It looks kind of blue in the vial. I'm not sure if you can catch, oh yeah, you can. Um, it looks kind of blue in the vial, and from what I looked at on the ink samples online, it looks like kind of a slate gray so it definitely has some blue in it so i'm excited to try it oh wow that looks very blue not what i was expecting at all i was expecting it to be um a little bit more of a subdued blue but that is um kind of more of like a midnight blue honestly all right so this is day oh oh that is the problem with these dip pens. Um, when you are not used to writing with them. I kind of made a mess here. This lovely blue, <laughs> this lovely blue blob here on my paper. All right, I don't want this to happen again on my coloring card, so I'm gonna try to hurry. Deatramentous ink fog. So here are all of the uh, swatches of the new ink samples on the coloring cards. So we're going to just take one last look. This is Sailor Manuel Sakura, Sailor Ink Studio 162, Sailor Yuramaku Amamoyo, Roar and Klinger Alt Bordeaux, Robert Oster Crystal Marine. You can definitely see that blue shimmer now. Um, very, very pretty color. 
And then finally, the Diatramentis Ink Fog Gray, which I definitely feel like is a blue gray. Probably more of a blue than a gray, honestly. It's like a dark slate blue. Um, kind of reminds me of my Ferris Wheel Press, um, what is it called? Glittering Glass without the shimmer. The Diotramentus Ink Fog Gray, this is what it looks like in the coloring card. Um, it is it is almost dry on the Tomoe River paper. This takes uh, an insanely long dry time. So definitely, as you can see, the writing sample is um, kind of horrible, but that's okay. Um, I never strive for perfection in my ink swatch videos. I just do this because it is fun. So, and then this is what it looks like in my Hobonichi A6. Definitely very blue. So that is it, friends. I'm so glad that you came along with me for this ink swatching video, and I hope you will tune in again. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Bye.